Welcome to the 2022 State of the City Address. I'm City Administrator Ben Mardig. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, we'll see videos showcasing this year's award winners for human rights, ethical leadership, employee excellence, board or commission member excellence, and Mayor for a Day essay contest. Hello, I am Second Ward Council Member and Mayor Pro Tem Jamie Reister. This event will report on what we as a city have accomplished over the past year and what we are working on to deliver this year. One major endeavor was updating the city's strategic plan. This is our second multi-year strategic plan as a community. Good evening. I'm Council Member at Large Clarice grenier Graba. As we worked through our first strategic plan, we saw the benefits of having a roadmap that kept us focused on where we want to go. Northfield continuously benefits from our engaged residents. We know where we want to go as a community, and we're on track to getting there. I'm First Ward Council Member Susie Nicassian. This last year hasn't just been one of recovering to where we were. We're moving forward and becoming an even healthier, more vibrant and inclusive community than ever before. And we're just getting started. Hi, I'm Fourth Ward Council Member Jessica Peterson-White. Two years ago, the City Council approved Northfield's official land acknowledgement statement. We stand on the homelands of the Wapakute and other bands of the Dakota Nation. We honor with gratitude the people who have stewarded this land throughout the generations and their ongoing contributions to this region. We acknowledge the ongoing injustices that we have committed against the Dakota Nation, and we wish to interrupt this legacy, beginning with acts of healing and honest storytelling about this place. Understanding our past is key to understanding our present and vital to crafting our future as a community. This is a responsibility the city takes very seriously. Hi, I'm Councilman at Large Brad Ness. The more we align the visions of the city council, boards and commissions, and city staff to reflect the aspirations of the entire community, the more likely we are to arrive at our destination and ultimately accomplish our purposes stated in our city charter to promote and protect the health, safety, morals, comfort, convenience, and welfare of the inhabitants of the city. When we build relationships within our community, celebrate our accomplishments, and honor our people, we build positive momentum that can help us accomplish our goals. Hi. I'm Third Ward Council Member George Zagulotto. Let's celebrate our accomplishments and honor the people that have helped us build a stronger community. Tonight, let's talk about the progress we've made and what the future may hold. Northfield is a special place that has always had its sight firmly set on the future. Northfield was founded by the progressive abolitionist John North, who was generations ahead of his time on issues of equity, education, and women's rights. Today, we strive to channel that same forward-thinking spirit in every decision we make. Leading us in our reflection and guiding us in our glimpse toward the future, please welcome, please welcome, please welcome Mayor Rhonda Pownell. Northfield Mayor Rhonda Pownell. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for the 2022 State of the City event. I'm happy to report that Norfield is on track for becoming an even stronger, better, more resilient community. We are flourishing beyond the strengths we had before the pandemic. We have renewed vigor for serving our friends and neighbors. We have increased interest in investing in our community both within and without. The state of our city is strong because Northfielders continually ask, what can we do better? In my time as mayor, we have kept that question in mind. Especially during the pandemic, we have had to find ways to get our work done and help our community to thrive. We continue to work to find both innovative and tested solutions to widespread problems. Climate change, housing shortages, and shifts in the labor force are not issues unique to Northfield but we can find solutions to those challenges that fit our community. Northfield has retained the visionary aspirations of our founder, John North, continually working to build a better tomorrow. We do this through introspection and analysis, along with reinvention and forward-thinking planning. 
We have spent years on strategic plans, on enhancement plans, climate action, housing and redevelopment, historic preservation. Today we are thoughtfully and strategically moving forward and taking action on every single one of those plans we put in place. Our strategic plan has six priorities, economic vitality, housing availability, quality facilities, diversity, equity, and inclusion, service excellence, and climate action. Those six priorities were represented in our 2022 budget, which passed through the City Council unanimously. This budget increased city staff capacity to include a horticulturalist, to plant and maintain all of the flowers and landscape beds downtown and in the parks, a civil engineer to help manage a significant investment in all the planned street and utility improvement projects, and to oversee the enhancements to the riverfront parks. An assistant city planner to focus on ensuring a healthy downtown and assisting in development plan reviews. An economic development associate to help attract new businesses to offset the tax burden on residents. A new police officer to meet all call demands at peak time and allow the department to shift to have more proactive positive contacts with the community as recommended in the President's Task Force on the 21st Century Policing Reforms. A Northfield Public Broadcasting Station Manager to help keep you informed, like tonight, on what's going on in the city and a Spanish translator to make sure the city is serving all of our community members. Strengthening the community in these ways has costs, of course. Yet with all of this, we are keeping Northfield amongst the lowest in total property taxes in our peer cities. If you have visited City Hall lately, you can see improvements. The renovation will provide more safety and security measures for our city staff and better service counters and waiting areas for community members doing business at City Hall. It also provided an opportunity to pay tribute to St. Olaf and Carleton Colleges in two of the conference rooms. It's fun to see those finishing touches and make our facilities both unique and connected to our community. The city completed an expansion study for the Northfield Community Resource Center building that houses both 50 North as well as many other nonprofits serving our community. Recommendations from that study will be out yet this year. For most of us in the general public, the only time we will come into contact with the city is for basic services and seeking information. Whether at City Hall, the library, or even the ice arena, we strive to ensure excellent service for the community at our quality facilities. These are important features of our strategic plan. We as the City Council set the overarching vision and the strategic priorities, initiatives, and goals to achieve that vision. Our dedicated city staff are committed to delivering on that vision and those goals and seeks to find creative, innovative solutions to challenges all the time. Our City Communications Department launched a new city mobile app a few of the easily accessible features include watching a city meeting, reporting on a concern, signing up for notifications and paying building permits, and utility bills. Our City of Northfield app is available on Google Play and the Apple App Store, and you can download that now if you're bored, right, or after my speech. As community members look to find more services online and on demand, our local government must once again be forward-thinking and consider the future we want to lead. The internet is an integral part of our daily lives. We already knew it was important to build out high-speed internet, so everyone has access to it. But like so many other things, the pandemic exasperated that need when more people started working remotely and students were also attending school remotely. To address this, Metronet, a telecommunications company, is deploying high-speed fiber optic internet throughout the city. Service is expected to be available to all Northfield buildings by the end of this year. 
We are excited that this will be an option for every business and resident in Northfield. In order to better meet public expectations, our Northfield Police Department has adapted their service delivery model. From adding body cameras and building an entirely new policy manual, which included public input, to addressing drug addiction through partnering to offer free addiction and recovery services and distributing free Narcan to the public. Our police department leadership has engaged with public stakeholders to address recruitment challenges and is committed to continuing to recruit a workforce that is representative of our community. The recent addition of a law enforcement program at the Northfield Community College Collaborative will assist in attracting diverse quality candidates to serve our community. The Law Enforcement Career Pathways Program was created in partnership with the Northfield Community College Collaborative and Riverland Community College. The program opened up law enforcement classes in Northfield for students to take classes closer to home and with the supportive structure of the collaborative. The majority of students in this program are female or people of color who are traditionally underrepresented in law enforcement. The addition of grant funding for tuition through Northfield Wings has removed the financial barrier for many of the students in achieving their law enforcement degree. Our Communications and Human Resources Department has increased training for language line interpretation throughout city departments in addition to the expansion of the Spanish translator position to full time. This has enabled our city communications to steadily increase outreach for all city services to the entire community. None of our strategic plan initiatives and goals can or should be executed without strong and thoughtful communications with all members of the public. We're working on creating a community where everyone feels welcome through policy, activities, training, and hiring. Our city leadership helped organize and is participating in a group called the Northfield Racial and Ethnic Equity Collaborative. It's a community-led effort around racial equity and inclusion. It strives to help build our shared cultural competence, understand our biases, and carry out the work of systems change to begin shifting power structures, resources, policies, and practices. Our city staff attended several trainings on a range of topics, such as transgender equity for employees and customers, racial equity, and the historical context of inequities. We also approved a limited English proficiency plan and a pronoun use handbook policies. Our library received a grant to support creative projects and innovative service delivery to historically underserved groups. The library has used this funding to develop kits, projects, and outreach programs. The kits and programs collectively, Make It Mobile, will provide our lower income and minority populations access to opportunities that would otherwise be inaccessible. Accessible artistic and technological experiences will inspire new modes of creative expression and interest in possible career fields in art and technology that are disproportionately out of reach to historically marginalized groups. Communication and having the right people in place is so important to building relationships as leaders, as individuals, and as a community. We continue to strengthen our representative, equitable, and open small town government made up of both civil and public servants. We are committed to meeting the expectation of quality service through strong collaboration amongst all working on behalf of our community. Today, we will highlight a few individuals chosen by their peers who serve our community with excellence. As the video plays, I invite the following award recipients to the stage. Employee of Excellence, Board and Commission Member of Excellence, Human Rights, High School Ethical Leadership. Award winners and members of the City Council, please make your way to the stage now. Congratulations to Steve Noreen, who is the recipient of the Employee Excellence Award. 
Steve works in the wastewater department as the maintenance planner and scheduler. He has built a sense of camaraderie among staff that has turned the wastewater department into a team. When a coworker asks him a question, he will drop whatever he is doing to help. You can frequently hear him say, let's go take a look at it. Steve started working for the city in 2019 and jumped into the enormous task of updating and implementing the city's computerized maintenance management software. He got the software to such a good point where he is getting inquiries from other cities about it. He also created a thorough inventory of parts and equipment at the wastewater treatment plant. He created streamlined processes for preventative maintenance tasks for each piece of equipment and linked their instruction manuals in the maintenance management software. So, instead of walking back to the office to view a manual, staff can pull it up on their smartphone and the documentation needed to perform a task is at their hand. This is especially handy because staff work on equipment in several buildings. His teamwork and expertise in his field will continue to be a huge asset for the city of Northfield. Congratulations, Steve Noreen. This year is a recipient of the Employee Excellence Award. Congratulations to Amira Halib, the recipient of the 2022 Ethical Leadership Award. The City of Northfield's Ethical Leadership Award is awarded to a junior or senior high school student enrolled in a Northfield area high school who exhibits high standards, has a consistent approach to excellence as a student, is innovative, and demonstrates integrity, leadership, and service. Amira embodies all of these attributes and much more. As a four-year member of Northfield Youth Bank, she exhibits a natural curiosity about her community, an open mind, a desire to learn from others, and a deep passion to facilitate and bring about change. She continually models thoughtful and reasoned discourse to her peers, while also actively encouraging others to participate and listening with an open mind to their comments and ideas. Amira consistently pushes the group to work harder and think deeper about the, what they are striving to do in the community and what their impact can and should be. As part of the city's Youth on Boards program, she serves an elect, as an elected member of the Healthy Community Initiative Board of Directors. Currently serving in her third year on the board, Amira has served this year as the co-chair of the board. She has stepped into this role confidently and with an innate understanding of how valuable her experience and perspective as a high school student is. Both understanding this and sharing her thoughts and opinions, she has made HCI a stronger organization that is able to make significant change in the Northfield community and Rice County as a whole. Amira is a member of the leadership team of the Black Student Union Organization at Northfield High School. This organization creates a space for Black students to organize activities, explore discussions that pertain to their experiences, and mentor one another. Creating and nurturing this space for others in the high school has been a true gift to our community. These are just three of numerous places Amir is involved in the school and community. She is also a member of the state champion knowledgeable team, a peer helper with students supporting students, a part of Rock and Roll Revival, a National Honor Society member, and a participant in Carleton College's liberal arts summer program for high school students. As you have heard, Amira is exceptional. I am grateful for the impact she has made on our programs and in our community. Congratulations, Amira Halib this year's recipient of the Ethical Leadership Award. Thank you so much for giving me this award. I'm very honored and thank you again. The Northfield Human Rights Commission is pleased to announce Matt Hillman as the 2022 recipient of the City of Northfield's Human Rights Award. The Human Rights Award annually recognizes an area individual, group or organization that has contributed to the advancement of human rights in Northfield. Dr. Hellman is a superintendent for the Northfield Public Schools and has been an advocate for equitable access, anti-racism work, and inclusion. In the words of his nominators, Matt is someone who is passionate about listening to our community, the students, and their families. 
To be a good leader, you have to be a great listener. We are very grateful to you for really empowering our voices, helping us make big and impactful changes, and caring for the well-being of our children. Congratulations to you, Matt Hillman, on being this year's recipient of the Human Rights Award. I have to share with you that is, this is incredibly meaningful to me on many levels. So I, I thank uh, the members of our Hispanic Parent Advisory Committee uh, for thinking enough of me to nominate me for the award. And I will share with you, I, I couldn't accept this award today uh, without going back to uh, someone who's meant a lot to us in our lives here in Northfield, Father Dennis Dempsey, uh, the former pastor of a St. Dominic Church who was tragically killed in a car accident here a few months ago. And, Father Denny won this award in 2017. And as my youngest son said, Father Denny may, may very well be the best human being many of us have ever met. And Father Denny was a great example to me uh, to have courage to make sure that we are including everyone in our community and making sure that we are doing the best that we can to remove barriers for people. And I, I, I was a history major, so I was, of course always have to share a, a little bit of history and Father Denny being one of the most recent examples of someone who really made sure that he fought for equitable access and that everyone in our community is included. But going all the way back to the founding of our town, John North, who founded Northfield, was a well-known abolitionist of his time. Uh, and he was very uh, strong in advocating for suffrage for African-Americans uh, when the Civil War was over and was just a huge advocate of making sure that uh, everyone felt welcomed as well. And so I think that, of course, we have examples throughout um, all of our history here in Northfield, going all the way back to the founding with John North uh, in the 1850s. And so that brings us to today. And um, I will also share that I feel both incredibly proud of this award and also unworthy. I'm proud because of the strong work that our school district has done to try to make sure that we are preparing every student for lifelong success and making sure that every parent has an equitable access to be involved in their child's education. I'm really proud of the work that our administrators, our teachers, and our support staff have done to lean into our anti-racism framework. And again, making sure it's a school system that is for everyone. And I also feel unworthy because when we look at the progress that we've made, we know that there is far more progress to go than what we have made so far. Um, and so we are daunted by that and the fact that there's so much more work to do. Uh, but we will we look at what we've done so far. We are proud of that. And we commit to continuing this work to make sure that we're removing barriers and that every single person in our community has real opportunity to achieve the American dream. So thank you very much for this award. On behalf of the school district, I'm very grateful uh, for it. This year's Board or Commission Member Excellence Award winner is Joe Gazier. This award is given to a Board or Commission member who performs duties exceptionally well and takes initiative to go beyond the expectations of their role. It recognizes a member who improves or enhances service and quality of work in ways that make a substantial difference for their respective commission or board. It goes to a member who exemplifies professionalism, teamwork, and dedication advocates for creative solutions to policy problems that exemplify the city's vision and mission and demonstrates a high ethical standard. Joe Gazier turned off the Planning Commission's Zoning Board of Appeals after nine years of exemplary service to the city. Beyond dedicating time and energy to the job of chair, he performed this service with professionalism, intelligence, and creativity. Joe's example as a team leader and his measured demeanor facilitated civility all around. Those of us who had the privilege of serving with Joe valued what he brought to the table and appreciated the way he made the Planning Commission more effective in the process. Joe's commitment to the citizens and community of Northfield was also demonstrated by the way he listened. He dealt regularly with many strong personalities in various positions, fellow commissioners, staff, citizens, other boards, and he established effective working relationships with all of them. People enjoyed working with Joe, and he is well-deserving of this honor. Congratulations to Joe Gazier on being the 2022 recipient of the Border Commission Member Excellence Award. Thank you all for this honor. It has been a privilege to serve on the Planning Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals these last nine years. 
I would like to extend a special thank you to all of the volunteers and city staff with whom I have worked over the years as well. Much of what we have accomplished over the years would not have been possible without you. Finally, I would like to encourage anyone who is looking for a way to get involved in the community to volunteer for one of the many boards and commissions that Northfield has to offer. Distinguished guests, I present to you our award recipients. What a wonderful celebration of excellence in community service by both our public and civil servants. Let's give our award winners another round of applause. <laughs> Northfield has a deeply embedded spirit of service, service to others, service to our community, and service for a better future. Let's take another look at the people working and serving on behalf of our community. As public servants, we have all had to make difficult decisions for the community we serve. Neighbors and civil government take care of each other. We aspire to meet the needs of all of our Northfield community members and to nurture positive growth whenever possible. This is a long endeavor and one none of us will likely see the end of but I believe that patience and perseverance will provide rewards for this community for generations to come. Our community is always evolving, continually changing for those who call Northfield home. Local democracy will always seek to serve the Northfield of today. And while staying connected to our past, we must also seek to meet the needs of today while anticipating the assets required to excel in the future. We can all think of structures intrinsic to our community identity. These buildings and places give us a unique sense of self and belonging. Bridge Square, the Ames Mill, our library, the Riverwalk, the Archer House, the White Center, and other iconic buildings at both colleges. These places have changed since their creation, reinvented to serve the community. Some had change thrust upon them by circumstance. As our community changes and evolves with the passage of time, so too do our buildings and places. We cannot recreate the past, nor would doing so properly serve the community of today. We can best serve our heritage by serving Northfield's present. By being intentional, by being visionary, we can serve generations to come while honoring generations past. Buildings and structures established in 1893, 1923, 2023, standing together, forming our community identity, and serving one Northfield. One of the most consequential challenges of our lifetime is addressing the climate crisis and its lasting effects on our planet. During a global crisis, we as a small city can feel helpless or insignificant. However, we have created a climate action plan that can guide us to a greener, more sustainable and resilient future for all. To meet our goal of 100% carbon-free electricity for our community by 2030, the city is working with Nokomis Energy to develop some scenarios for locally produced carbon-free electricity. This project will help identify locations that would be feasible for on-site solar, as well as upgrades and changes to the grid infrastructure. The Center for Energy and the Environment conducted free lighting audits for 13 businesses and apartments in Northfield. It encompassed 31 buildings in all. As of October 2021, they had tracked that these buildings could achieve around 79,000 kilowatt hours or about 36 kilowatts in savings. I have no idea what that means, but I'm told that it's good. 
Speaking of energy audits, I'm really excited that Northfield participated in a fun competition against other cities to see who could have the most residents sign up for a home energy audit in 2021. We, we went up against 20 cities, cities like St. Louis Park, Bloomington, Richfield, Burnsville, Eden Prairie, Edina, and Minneapolis. And we won. We had the most home energy squad visits per capita in 2021. We'll have a traveling trophy on display at City Hall for winning. Thank you to all of you that participated in that. The residents who signed up for the home, and by the way, I think I'm gonna run, I'm gonna rub that in with all my mayor friends when I see them. <laughs> The residents who signed up for the home energy audits learned about how their home uses, uses energy, how to reduce heating and cooling, cooling costs, and how to improve their comfort year round. The home energy squad replaced their shower heads and light bulbs to energy efficient ones, and the squad connected them to additional energy saving resources if they had a need for a bigger energy fix in their home. For our city buildings, we have increased our work toward being carbon neutral through many energy conservation initiatives, including replacing outdated high energy consuming equipment with energy efficient ones, converting to LED lighting using efficient appliances and computers, and using sensors that reduce energy consumption when rooms are not in use in city buildings. Another area of emphasis emphasis for the city's climate initiatives is with electric vehicles. Our Northfield Police Department began use of three hybrid electric vehicles in 2021. The department has adjusted future vehicle purchases to continue in this trend. We had an outdoor event this last year to learn about electric vehicles. We partnered with Recharge Minnesota, the Rotary Club, and Northfield Shares to host an electric vehicle experience expo. People were able to test drive electric cars, local electric vehicle or EV owners, showed their vehicles and shared information about how they work, how far they can go on a charge, how long it takes to charge them, costs, and more. Attendees ranged from people who were very knowledgeable about EVs to those who didn't know much. For many in attendance, this was their first hands-on exposure to electric vehicles. As with any long-term goal, progress begins with these initial conversations. We're partnering on events and on policy. We worked with the Center for Energy and Environment to develop a sustainable building policy that requires new and redevelopment projects to meet the requirements of sustainable or green building rating systems. The policy applies to projects that are seeking financial assistance from the city for a large dollar amount and have a large footprint and certain heating and ventilation impacts. Sustainably built buildings will use less energy, cost less to operate, and foster a healthier environment. We've talked about energy use and electricity, but there are many areas we're working on to make our community resilient and sustainable. One small critter we have our eye on is the emerald ash borer, which is one of the most threatening pests to trees in Minnesota. This insect kills ash trees within two to four years. Northfield is receiving a grant from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources to begin efforts to manage trees for this invasive species. The project will involve removing and replacing some trees on public property. As part of the grant, we'll be teaching the community about the emerald ash borer and what they can do to trees on their property to stop the spread of the pest. No conversation about sustainability, carbon impact, and green living can be had without talking about our parks and open spaces. We started working on the Park and Recreation Capital Invest Investment Plan in the fall of last year. Later in the spring, we'll share the draft plan with the community for input and a final plan should be complete this summer. The investment plan will provide strategies for funding deteriorated park infrastructure and address unmet needs in the community. 
The future is bright for the development and improvement of city parks in Northfield. You'll find we've had many years of success with our public spaces from parks to brick and mortar investments. The police station, library, and the fire station have all been remodeled in recent years. The roundabout at Jefferson Parkway made a busy road safer and provided more safe recreation trails. The East Cannon River Trail is an amenity that provides recreational use for both Norfield and Dundas. Parks serve the physical, emotional, and cultural needs for our community. Whether it's a solitary stroll in our park system or meeting a friend at a food truck to take in some live music, our parks serve many purposes for the Norfield community. Our parks were vital for the Norfield Public Library hosting some fun, COVID-safe outdoor events last summer, including Norfield's inaugural Pride in the Park celebration. It was an inclusive event supporting and uplifting our LGBTQIA friends and neighbors. We had local, regional, and state organizations participate with booths and activities. We had more than 400 people from Norfield and the surrounding area attend this new annual event. Then in the fall, our library hosted the fourth annual Hispanic Heritage Festival. It was a day-long event celebrating the rich cultures and contributions of our Hispanic and Latinx friends and neighbors. We had dancing, music, food, arts, and crafts, a diverse crowd of more than 2,400 people from all over the state was welcomed to Norfield. It was a gorgeous day with many countries represented. Celebrations like Pride in the Park and our Hispanic Heritage Celebration foster connection among friends and neighbors and gives everyone in our community a sense of belonging. Let's look to some of the younger leaders in Northfield, the visionaries who will lead us to the future we've discussed. Will our winning Mayor for a Day SAS writers please follow city council members onto the stage. While the future and current leaders of Northfield make their way to the stage, we're going to watch a video showcasing their visions for a reimagined Ames Park, alongside highlights from community events from the last year. Hi, I'm Jamie Reister. I'm on the Northfield City Council and represent the second ward. It's my honor to present this year's Mayor for a Day essay contest winners. This contest is open to fourth and fifth grade students in Northfield. As the current president pro tem, I had the pleasure, along with the mayor, to read all of the wonderful entries. Northfield is a beautiful and inviting community possessing attributes that many communities would love to have. Ames Park, or Village Green on the Water, is an important gateway park along the Cannon River. We asked students, if you were mayor for a day, what artistic feature would you add to Ames Park that would enhance or increase the love people have for our community? Build upon Northfield's small town charm, and create an inviting and welcoming fun space where people of all ages and abilities would like to be. Here are the winning entries. Hi, I am Geraldine Tim and I'm in the fourth grade. If I were mayor for a day, an artistic feature I would add to Amos Park that would make people come to the park more often is, are you ready? a Mickey and Minnie Mouse sculpture for fun photos. It would increase the love people have for our community. It would also build upon Northfield's small town charm and create an inviting, welcoming fun space where people of all ages and abilities would like to be. I would enhance Ames Park by adding a small miniature prairie and a community garden with lots of flowers and a vegetable patch. I would also add a chicken coop and everyone who wanted could care for the chickens. The chickens are nice birds, and they like to be cuddled. I would add a kindness tree to Ames Park. The kindness tree would have kind notes tied to the tree. People could take one of the notes to read if they feel bad or need encouraging words. They can also write some notes to hang on the tree. 
I would also have the tree be a shorter tree so everyone can reach the notes. I would pick a tree in front of Ames Park so more people can see it and get to it. An artistic feature I would add to Ames Park would be a statue of people holding hands in a circle. There would be six people. The statue would represent the Northfield community. The first person would be pink, representing kindness. The person on its right would be green to show that Northfield is earth friendly. The third person would be blue and holding out its right hand to show that the people of Northfield help those in need. The fourth person would be clear to show how pure the people of Northfield are. The fifth person would be yellow like the sun to show how bright the people of Northfield are. And the sixth and final person would be a rainbow of colors to show everything the people of Northfield are in between. I think I would add colorful benches for people to sit and sip their morning coffee and let all their worries fly away. The little ones would play by a pond or try to catch butterflies. The elders would watch as their grandkids catch tadpoles as they used to. Retired folks would help nurture their gardens. I would allow people to swim in the river as long as they know how to swim or bring a foldable device and it would be 50 cents per person. The ages allowed would be 13 plus. In the garden, there would be garden boxes filled with plants, pretty flowers, and vegetables for everyone to eat. Some of the food could also go to the community action center. I would add more things to the playground, like a brand new slide that's a nice shade of baby purple or I would add a climbing wall and a giant playground for all people, including disabled people. If I were mayor for a day, I would do all of this to help the people of Northfield. Distinguished guests, I present to you our Mayor of the Day essay winners. Good evening. My name is Mac Gimsey, and on the way out of my driveway tonight, little Levi, the 10 year old neighbor, caught me and said he wanted to tell me a joke. He loves telling me jokes. And I said, okay, but you got to hurry because I'm, I'm in a rush. And he said, that's fine, but here goes. Are you ready? Yes. Knock, knock. Who's there? Do it again. Knock, knock. Who's there? Repeat. Repeat who? Oh, okay. Who, 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 who? <laughs> <laughs> it really pays to listen to the young, and we have just had a perfect example of that tonight. What a wonderful event. And so I, I do thank you for inviting me. Uh, for 50 years I've been a local sculptor and poet and teaching on the hill and for the last 20 years I've actually been you know, what they call an emeritus professor at St. Olaf College. I've been asked to tell you that in February of 2020 I was honored to receive the Living Treasure Award from the Northfield Arts and Culture Commission. It was a total surprise. And honestly, as I look around here, even with your masks on, I see people that I would love to nominate because you are living in treasures. I have a, a bronze sculpture out in the lobby uh, entitled Striving for Peace on Horizons Brim. And you're welcome to join me there after the program if you want to talk about it, but it is interactive. So please spin it and make an earnest wish. I say a plea for peace in the Ukraine, if you will. In fact, both the sculpture and poetry are dedicated to a host of Nobel Peace Prize laureates, some of whom have actually come to Northfield. 
The poetry was set to music for the St. Olaf Choir Centennial Tour and was sung in Carnegie Hall in New York City in February of 2020, and I was there. Two weeks later uh, came the Living Treasure Award, and two weeks after that came the dreaded COVID. What an era. But when sung, my poetry reaches an aesthetic realm that I cannot achieve on my own. So what I'm going to try to do is recite it because I think poetry deserves recitation. And uh, it sounds a lot like an invocation or a prayer for peace. But I need your help. On cue, please say, our future is still ahead to hold. Ready, try. We don't need the St. Olaf Choir, you're good, okay. It will, I'll give you a cue at the end of each of the, uh, <clears throat> of the stanzas. The title of the poetry, Striving for Peace on Horizon's Brim. God of art and life and creative laughter, of dancing arms and dazzling color fragments, Twirl us on to the heights of dreaming that our future is still ahead to hold. God of sprightly winds and vastly skies, from melting polarscapes to the drifting sands of time, reach along the endless shores of global warming, then stretch us into common earthly caring. God of truth in every breath and heartbeat. Molder of our righteous deeds, pour us into shields of justice to triumph over all who would destroy our fragile freedoms. God of soaring spirits and redeeming actions of grinding down and churning up, pound human malice into submission, then nudge our good intentions to completion. You're doing great. Cloud of God and seamless gathering of sky Spin the bulging wheel of centering that will push us to the very edge of our horizons, then hurl us to our farthest measure. God of dwelling in the loveliest and the lonely, where beauty's palette meets its master of disguise. Fill our lens with images of mercy that will review, reveal all acts of violence against those who are oppressed and cannot help themselves. We share our feast of peace today with all ethnicity where we are ready to devour one another in quiet curiosity to find what we truly know is hiding somewhere inside of each of us a loving heart. Our future is still ahead. So stand, flesh on bones, wake now. You and all humanity speak our single-throated story that beyond the stones which hold our walls on horizon's brim, we wake each day knowing exactly how and why we live. How and why. We live. Um.
future. Peace be with you. What a beautiful poem. Indeed, our future is still ahead to hold. Fill our lens with images of mercy, stream compassion, weave our words and deeds with kindness. If our world would truly aspire to be that kind of world, we would be better off. Thank you, Mac, for sharing your art with us. Beautiful. Norfield is a town of long established families alongside new friends and neighbors. We are always attracting new community members with our vibrant arts culture, public parks, and spirit of connectedness. Regardless of where your family is from, where you've lived before, or what experiences you're coming from, all Norfielders deserve the same respect, dignity, and human decency. There are certain things no person should have to live without, quality food, a clean environment, safe shelter. These are human rights which the city strives to protect and enhance. Housing is a fundamental necessity. In Norfield, we take care of our neighbors and that means doing everything that we can to make sure everyone has a home that's both safe and affordable. Increasing housing necessitates change, and at times it necessitates difficult conversations about what elements of our current city we can look beyond in order to attain the future city we aspire to become. One new dwelling, just one, can mean a fresh start for an individual, starting a job, learning at a school, providing a stable and welcoming environment. A new generation of Northfielders calling this place their home. A new housing unit meeting the basic needs of individuals and families, shelter, stability, a place to call home. And our aging population also requires more accessible, affordable housing that sustains their quality of life into old age. This is simply taking care of our friends and neighbors. There are abundant benefits to building more housing, better housing, different housing options, but fundamentally, each new dwelling created is a step toward attaining those human rights which we are morally obligated to protect. We completed a housing study that will be vital for the city and developers in guiding future decisions. It will be a great tool when considering future development. It lays out the supply and demand for housing, the expected population growth of the area, demographics, and much more. Ultimately, providing individuals and families with the kind of housing they need. Within the last year, several apartment complexes, subdivisions, and new homes have been built. And a few of those developments are planning another phase with more housing units. Together, we built 150 units last year, and another 450 units are planned to be built this year. We are partnering with Three River Community Action to provide 32 units of affordable housing, as well as partnering with the Community Action Center to provide 17 units of emergency, transitional, and affordable housing. We are also working to improve the conditions of housing already available in our community. The city approved 10 applications for down payment assistance, which means qualified first time homeowners are getting help to purchase their first home. We processed three residential rehab loans so those families can replace their roof and gutters, repair their foundation, or improve their heating, cooling, electrical, and plumbing. We also processed one aging in place grant, which means a family made modifications to their current home so that they can safely age in place. We explored the current rental licensing code and looked at blight and housing maintenance issues and proposed ordinance changes. This was done with the goal of improving housing quality throughout the city for both rental 
and owner-occupied housing units. In recent years, the city has experienced a new surge of interest in residential development. Right now, Spring Creek 2, Bluff View, Craywood, and Maple Place, a new subdivision on the former Llama Farm, are poised to begin construction in 2022. This is on the heels of unprecedented development of multifamily housing in the last few years, including Fifth Street Lofts, Maple Brook Townhomes, Timberfield 1, 2, and 3, as well as eight Habitat Homes and the Community Action Center Community Build Development at Hillcrest Village. <clears throat> Expanding housing options provides existing and prospective individuals and families with more options and facilitates turnover of the existing housing stock. When we remain committed to working through the challenging and difficult discussions on some of these development projects, we make room for individuals and families to call Northfield home and create a safe, welcoming place where all people can thrive. This is what public service is about. Service, serving the community, and all of our community. Northfield is on track for increasing resilience and even prosperity, not simply recovery. Some communities are looking to merely get back to where they were before the pandemic. In Northfield, we're looking beyond to what we can do better than we did before. In Northfield, we both adopt and thoughtfully and strategically implement every single one of our city plans. Building out the crossings, a redevelopment of a formerly blighted site has been a long process but is nearly complete. With the hotel and Premier Bank project in the last few years, their site has only one lot left to develop. These improvements brought more life and activity to one of our key gateway corners with architecture that draws from both college campuses and contributes to Northfield's economic vitality. Let's expand on the subject of economic vitality, which is really about making a thriving, flourishing community. We've worked hard over the last year to support the businesses and nonprofits that serve our local community. The City of Northfield received approximately $1.5 million through the Federal CARES Act. We allocated $300,000 in grants to help businesses and another $200,000 in grants to help nonprofits navigate the impact of the COVID-19 outbreak. The city applied for state assistance through the Minnesota Investment Funds to help bridge a financial gap for Allflex, a local manufacturer. Allflex expanded its main location in Northfield from a 25,500 square foot facility to a 40,000 square foot facility. They invested even more in capital equipment and created 35 to 40 new jobs. That's 35 to 40 new jobs in Northfield from just one business. Many of our downtown businesses took advantage of our facade improvement grant. We wanted to encourage our downtown building owners to reinvest in the exterior of their buildings to extend the life of these historic structures and contribute to a better downtown. The city gave out more than $100,000 in grant money. Businesses contributed another $260,000 in private investment. 13 buildings benefited in 2021. That's a jump from the one business that took advantage of this program in 2020. We're also continuing our socioeconomic initiatives to bring equity of resources to business development for veteran, women, and minority-owned businesses. There are lots of reasons to be hopeful about the state of our city. From the grassroots organizing to our federal and state partnerships, Northfield is finding new avenues to build upon our flourishing economy and meet the needs of our people. Our community is unified in its pursuit of thoughtful growth and intentional community building. Let's hear from some of the amazing people working and serving on behalf of our community every day. I serve the Northfield community because I thought it was important that I give back to the community. Being a lifelong member, I've seen how the 
the city has changed over time, and it and it's important now to listen to the constituents and try and better the city of Northfield. I serve because I want to contribute my unique combination of perspectives from my different roles in local government and area-wide nonprofits connected with the hospital's mission and vision. I'm so proud of what our community has built. I love that Northfield um, has a strong sense of history and tradition, but isn't afraid to dream about the future. I love that Northfield is a small town with big ideas. What I love about Northfield, I love its location on the river, its history as a mill and college town, the old buildings, the many activities available. I love the way people care about this town. And my roots are here, two of my great-grandfathers homesteaded land just north of the city. I serve because it is the best way to positively impact the community and to give back where I am able. I serve because I just have a strong desire to give back to my community and leverage my experience to make a difference. I believe that we best serve our community by contributing our time, energy, to support its environmental, educational, and cultural well-being one who promotes and demonstrates the values of justice, fairness, and empathy. It's very fun to um, be able to work with other you know, passionate, civic-minded um, people. I've met a lot of interesting people through Rotary and the other groups I'm involved with. Working in Northfield, where so many people are willing to step forward and contribute their time and their wits and their talents to bettering the community around them, it's, it's very inspiring, continually inspiring, and we're, we're building a community together. We're, we're creating a world. Um, I can't imagine anything more satisfying than that. I choose to serve on Northfield boards because I think it's really important to not only give back to my community, but to create the change that I want younger people in Northfield to have that I didn't have. And I'm very grateful for the people before me who did that in Northfield, so I really want to take on that job of continuing it. Northfielders are engaged, informed, committed, and creative. They are doers and change makers who are deeply loyal to this community. All of those qualities make a really great community member, someone who looks out for their neighbor, looks out for their peers, and um, has a deep care for the space and um, area that they live. I serve because I want people to feel safe in pursuing their dreams and help those in need. I think that every young person who is willing and able to should at some point serve in their community in some capacity um, because I think giving back to our community and helping our neighbors is um, what we're intended to do um, and makes us happier people and makes us a stronger um, stronger people. I love all the bars that my band plays in, all the coffee houses, the schools. I've been involved in the schools, had four kids in town and they've been really good to us. I, had a baby born at the hospital, uh, and that's, that was awesome. Got vaccinated there. Well, I really enjoy serving Northfield. I feel like I've been really embraced um, fully with open arms. Um, and I feel like this is a really great community where I can grow and learn and also feel accepted and welcome. Northfielders are very engaged and they're very inquisitive. I would say that they they're lifelong learners, and I think they're really interested to participate in city government, which is really great. Uh, we know we certainly don't have a problem with apathy in the city of Northfield, so the engaged citizenry actively involved trying to make a difference to help one another is really what makes Northfield unique. That is why I'm inspired every day by the people of our community, the people I serve and the people I serve alongside. We are one Northfield, one community, and we are poised for continued success. I invite anyone who is interested in or passionate about our city to consider serving. Apply to serve on a board or commission, come to a city council meeting, and make your voice heard. Write emails, make phone calls, fill out surveys, volunteer for events. In whatever capacity you are able, join in serving our community. Participate in our success story. Because success for our community, an engaged community, means success for all of Northfield. I know some things, but I'm glad I don't have to know everything. 
I value the talented people serving our community. And when our community has difficult decisions over limited resources, or we have differences of opinions about navigating our course, when things get hard, I want those talented voices to be heard as well as the quietest ones. And I take very seriously my role in helping us stay together to figure it out. We need all voices, more voices working together to help us become a stronger, better, more resilient community. I recognize that the challenges that we face can sometimes seem daunting. Norfield cannot build enough housing for everyone in just a day, but we can work every day to make progress. Norfield cannot fill the labor shortage, but we can work together and make a difference. Norfield cannot halt climate change, but we can lead by example and proactively improve our environmental impact. I know that many in today's world can sometimes feel overwhelmed by the scope of our challenges, but I am heartened by the vastness of our public service, the extent to which Norfielders take care of each other. That's the Norfield that inspires me every day. There are major challenges ahead, and with your help, I know we can address these challenges and turn them into opportunities to strengthen our community. For generations, Norfielders have sacrificed to create the community that we now enjoy. Today is our opportunity to do the same. I am personally grateful for all the amazing people I work with, my council colleagues, my city, our city staff, the hardworking volunteers on our boards and commissions, our community organizations. Together, we are making a difference in building a stronger, better, more resilient community for today and tomorrow. Would the council members that are in the audience please stand? Board and commission members, wherever you are, both past and present, would you also please stand? Would all of our city staff members that are present here tonight please stand as well? Thank you so much, all of you, for your hard work, dedication, and commitment to excellence. Thank you for your continued optimism as we work together every day to create an even more vibrant, thriving community that's one of the best places in America to call home. Please join me in giving a round of applause for all of our amazing public and civil servants in the community we all serve.